Hi everyone, um, I'm so sorry. It, I totally dropped the ball on answering your questions, but I'm gonna do it right now, really quick. Quick and dirty video. So um, it was really nice to meet you all during our class session. We were talking about writing um, strategies um, and scholarships. So I'm just gonna go through these questions for you. So can I recommend a guide or tutorial for getting better at search terms and detailed search functions in PubMed and other medical and public health databases? Yes. Start with the research guides on the PSU Library website, go to Public Health, and um, under Public Health there's a guide for Community Health. That page has a PubMed help page on it. So that would be the first place to start. So that, that's what I'd recommend. You can also look at our YouTube channel. There's um, a video on using Sport Discus um, that's more like um, the physiology, like sports, uh, health and fitness, and then age line um, for aging gerontology. Um, okay, second question. In what areas do you wish students, researchers, would ask you for help that they usually do not or that we may not be aware of? Um, searching PubMed <laughs> earlier than, than, um, than I usually get questions for. I also like the kinds of conversations that we had with your class. Those are the ones that really feed me, especially since they're related not only to my teaching um, to work with you all, but also related to the work that I do in terms of research. So those are the ones that are really awesome. So I like those a lot. Um, and that's just really fulfilling for me. But um, yeah, and then also the other thing that I find is that there's sometimes a disconnect between the assignment that you get that says systematic review when you're not actually being asked to do a systematic review. So I kind of wish that we would connect on that a little bit more about literature reviews generally. Um, third, third question. Um, what do you wish all students knew before they approached me for support? I think I would ask um, to try and ask with the general Ask a Librarian questions first so on our website because there's people staffing chat and like if you email me first you might have to wait for three to five days or a month before I remember <laughs> to answer your question so um, I try to get to it within three days um, I apologize again for this so um, I wish that people would start there first and then they can tell me like what worked from that and what didn't um, so I'll move on. What are the hidden gems of the PSU library collection? I really love something you may not know about is a lot of the stuff we have in our special collections. We have a um, voter pamphlet archive project um, from the state of Oregon. So that's really cool. Um, we also have a bunch of like locally relevant um, special collections. Um, a lot of uh, plans. So like one of the cool things that we got several years ago, I took in the gift um, and it resides in special collections. We have the audio tapes of the meeting minutes of the LCDC, which is the Land, Com Land Committee Development Commission or whatever that stands for at the state, state level. So it's like the Land Planning Committee at the state level. Um, and, and Oregon has been such a, um, especially in the 70s and 80s, a front runner in urban planning and, and um, regional planning that I think that's a gem of a collection in and of itself. Um, okay, what strategies for information dissemination do you think are underused? GIFs. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I don't know. I myself feel overwhelmed. Like, I should be on Twitter. I have a Twitter account, but I, it just, I find it overwhelming. Um, I think we have too many venues and strategies. And honestly, I feel like I'm treading water through them, so I really don't know how to answer that question. Um, maybe I would say, like, the phone call. I know that in the pandemic it's not as easy um, but to call, especially people, like, through work. Um, the phone call. I'm, go I'm going old school. Okay. Uh, what are common ca challenges that you experience working in an interprofessional team? How did you or your team address those challenges? Oof, that's a good one. Um, well, uh, I would say that the most common challenge that I have, at, at least serving as a committee chair, is that once you serve as a committee chair, a lot of times you end up doing all the work of the committee. <laughs> 
Um, you may have discovered that already. Um, one of the strategies that I've used in those in those positions in the meetings to I like to have a pretty robust agenda distributed before a meeting and I always like to ask for volunteers about how we're going to get that work done or pose the question so now that we've decided to do this who can take it on and then if no one pipes up then it's like well it doesn't look like we can take it on so not volunteering yourself um I think the other talents that I've had in terms of working in an interprofessional team is that um I think as a person, I'm one who thinks critically, and I like to ask a lot of questions, and I like to understand process, and I think sometimes that can be frustrating to working with other to other people. So I have to keep that in check. Um, when I when I like, sometimes I feel like we micro focus, and sometimes I take it out to a macro question, and um, particularly in libraries, I think people get micro focused. So. I think sometimes I frustrate my colleagues by taking it back to the bigger picture sometimes and asking about that. Um, and we just deal with it. Okay, what tips do I have for working effectively with multiple team members on one written product? Um, assigning sections and assigning deadlines and due dates and assigning who's going to be editing. Um, and then who's going to be the final editor? Because one of the some of the feedback that I've gotten and that I've seen given to folks is that like if you're writing a, a if there's a written project, having like different sections have someone else's writing voice. So making sure that you identify who is the final editor and that person can make the final edits just to like have consistent voice over the written product. Um, but definitely like working on deadlines like. I'm working on it until 5 p.m. on this date, and then at 5 p.m., so-and-so, it's your turn to take over. And it's not that deadlines can't be flexible, it's just that you have to, in my experience and how I work as a human being, if you can't meet your deadline, just say you're not going to be able to meet it and throw out another one. Sorry, I'm not going to get to it by 5 o'clock, can we rearrange and I'll get it to you by 6, or, or just be really clear about that. Um, I find that that has been a really productive, like, working relationship that I have when I write with people to do that. Um, what do I know now about writing technique or practice that you wish you knew in grad, graduate school? I have recent, I feel like I've recently learned how to get rid of extemporaneous prepositional phrases. So <laughs> I've been, I, I feel like I, as an editor, have started um, feeling freer to chop sentences a little bit more and they don't need to be run on sentences. I feel like I've learned how to even write shorter sentences than I used to. And I think that that is important for clarity's sake. So that's what I wish I knew earlier. Um, okay, what kind of activities of my job bring you a sense of fulfillment? Honestly, when I got to work with you all, when I got to be with you all together but separate on Zoom, um, working with students is absolutely the thing that um, brings me a lot of fulfillment. And I think um, any like uh, human connection that I get to have. So if that's in my own research interviewing people, I would like that a lot. I like things where I do get to connect with people. And I also, I also really like editing work, actually. So editing work brings me a lot of fulfillment because I feel like um, I can see something uh, improve over time and I can see from where it was at the beginning and then where it was at the end when it got released into the world. So I like that. If I could develop a 2020 TED Talk, what would it be about and why? It would be about why global capitalism is um, killing academic libraries. Okay, sorry it took so long. Uh, I hope you all are well. Please don't hesitate to reach out.